Hello everyone, uh, I'm Ryan from Two Car Pros and today we are going to be taking a look at how to service or clean your throttle body housing for a 2005 Ford Focus with the 2 liter Duratec inline 4. Actually I'm pretty sure that's the only engine that came for the North American release. This is a North American Ford Focus, I know they were released globally uh, which is super cool but this one is the North American one uh, with the 2 liter inline 4 like I stated earlier. Now the tools you're going to need uh, are a quarter inch set of sockets. I'll leave a link below down in the description to a pretty decent set that's decently affordable on Amazon. And the other thing you're going to need is either carburetor spray or throttle body cleaning spray. Either one will work fine. Uh, there's a link down below in the description again to those. Um, other than that, this is a completely approachable repair for anyone. <laughs> I'm pretty sure anybody could do this repair in any circumstance. It is very easy. Uh, with Thanksgiving right around the corner, I wanted to make a fun, quick video that explains something that is uh, that can cause a lot of problems because if there's a lot of coking developing on a throttle plate, uh, that could throw all kinds of interesting and different error codes that you wouldn't really think are associated with it, but they are. So this is a really easy and cool way to service your throttle body housing and even if it's not throwing any codes, it's just a good idea to maintenance it. As you'll see later in the video, the one in this car is absolutely filthy. I can't even believe it. I, I thought actually when I was doing it that one side was white and the other side was like a bronzish color. It wasn't. It was just that's how much coking had developed on the back of the throttle plate. Um, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the repair. Okay, the first things first, before we do anything, we're going to disconnect the battery by removing the negative battery terminal cable. Like that, put that down here, and we're ready to move on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this if you're following along at home, I am going to remove the intake boot and why I'm doing that is because uh, it's easier to get to this last bolt down here on the throttle body. Now if you're following along at home like I said you don't have to do that that is just so I can show it to you easier it's easier to film and it's easier to perform and it's really easy to take off. So if you want to follow me on this part that's great but it's not hundred percent necessary as I'm sure someone will comment. Uh, you're going to need a six millimeter socket to loosen the uh, hose clamps for the boot, just like that. And for this EVAP tube, we're going to just grab this safety here, push it over like this, and then remove. Just like that. With those three things out of the way, we can remove the intake boot here. Excellent. The next thing we need to do is worry about this cover here. Uh, it just covers what looks like the throttle spring assembly, but um, a little more when we remove it because it's covering up one of, the, one of the bolts we need to remove. So we need to remove this cover. Get this tube here out of the way. And then a seven millimeter socket. go just like that and we can remove it and the entire throttle is exposed. So the next thing we're going to do is remove this electrical connector here it's on the throttle actuation sensor and you just push down right where my pointer finger is and um, just kind of rock it back and forth that's the safety and then it comes off down like that so we can put that aside. All right so the next thing we need to do is worry about this junction pin here so this connects the throttle cable which is this to the throttle spring assembly. Now the way it's held in place is with this funny little plastic clip. So if you try to remove it, it's really going to fight you. It's not going to work and you might break it, which would be such a bummer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these plastic flaps and try to force it underneath this uh, pin here. It's going to be tedious. It's going to be annoying. So just bear with me. Like that. it under, get the other one, force that under like that, 
and then this should come right off. With all that done and out of the way, we can remove the four eight millimeter bolts that hold the throttle body to the intake manifold. I'm using a quarter inch drive uh, socket with a medium extension in order to get at these bolts here. And I'm gonna do the tough ones first, which are the bottom ones, which is what I'm working on here. So I just broke it loose and spin them off. So it's important that we remember uh, how tight they were on because I'm not gonna look up a torque spec right now, but if I find one, I'll put one on screen later. It wasn't on super tight, so we need to find a safe spot for these four bolts. There's another one down here on the bottom left. You can't see it on camera, but you would see it in real life. And again, they are not on very tight. I would uh, definitely be careful putting these back on. There we go, number two. And notice how I'm doing the hard ones first, so that way this thing doesn't try to move on me when I'm getting to the hard ones. Because if you take all three of the easy ones out first, and then you go for the hard one, it might flop around and be quite annoying. Number three. See what I mean about the last one? Just a little tip. A little tip from me to you. Oops. There we go. Be careful. It will drop. And now we can remove the throttle body. All right. So we're over here at my workbench and this is our throttle body. And we can see on the throttle plate, the back of the throttle plate here, there is some significant dirt and grossness. And what that's called is coking. So like that right there, that's total coking. And why that occurs is because your air filter can't remove all the impurities out of the air. It's impossible. So, you know, hundreds of thousands of gallons of air have gone through this thing over the course of its lifetime. Little impurities build up on it and that's what's called coking. So in order to fix that, we can use some carb spray here. Uh, I know I'm gonna get a couple of comments saying you should use um, throttle body spray. I'm not even sure those are entirely different. Everyone tells me it is, but I've been doing this a long time and uh, I haven't seen a difference yet. So if you wanna use throttle body spray, I completely support that decision, but I'm gonna be using carb spray because I have about six cases of it. And I'd hate for it to go to waste. So. Uh, you can already see how much gunk is coming up on this rag here. Oh yeah, look at that. Look, at, it's night and day. Look how much gunk is on the back of this plate here. Okay, well I'm gonna be here a while, so you're just going to clean it like this. I doubt you wanna watch me clean all day, because this is gonna take me a good 15 minutes to clean up. So. Just in that little time frame, look how much better I've already made it. And then I'm also going to um, do this side, even though it looks pretty clean. I'm still going to do it. Um, do the dirty side first, and then the clean side, then look back at the dirty side. Other than that, uh, this is going to be pretty boring watching me clean. So I'll get you guys when it's done. All right, it's mostly clean. I might uh, give it another pass through. But as you can see, it's much better than it was. Uh, I also forgot to mention, you need to clean off the mating surface between the intake manifold and the throttle housing, uh, especially around this gasset, gasket here. So we just want to make sure that's clean so it's, it's uh, a good seal when we replace it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I might clean this a little bit more, but it is looking a whole lot better uh, than it was. And you're never going to get it surgery precision clean. Um, better than this would be good, but you can see that it is <laughs> really a lot better than it was. Okay, with that all nice and clean, we can go put it back in the car. Next thing we're gonna do is take some carb spray and a rag and we're gonna clean the mating surface on the intake manifold. This will ensure a really good seal because you don't want any air gaps. Gaps, gaps are bad. <laughs> you definitely don't want any gaps. There we go, that's looking much better. And now we can replace the throttle housing. So 
So what I'm going to do is put these in finger tight, or hand tight, or whatever you want to call it, and then tighten them up later. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go cross style, so I'm going to make an X in the tightening pattern, so it tightens on evenly. Hands cross tightening. There we go, this is going well. Okay, now I'm going to do the one you guys can't see in the bottom right. And I'm doing this one last, so I know it's lined up. Notice I did the bottom one when I removed it. I did the bottom right one first, and when I'm putting it back, I'm doing it last. That is so it's easier on me. Okay, so now that that is nice and finger tight, we're going to grab our ratchet and uh, cinch it up here. I'm not going super tight with it. Uh, if I find a torque spec, I will put it on screen now, but if you don't have a torque wrench, which is totally understandable, because I'm sure the torque spec is quite low, and those typically torque wrenches start at 25, and I guarantee this is below 25, so just you know, about hand tight. Not, not stupid tight. Don't hulk these in or anything. They're just little 8mm uh, bolts. And of course, remembering to do your cross, your X patterning. Just like that, now we can plug in our electrical connector here. It goes on like that, and when it snaps into place, there's a little click, you know what's on. Next, uh, we need to put this throttle linkage back on, and it's really easy. You just put it into this chamber here and pull up while holding uh, the throttle spring in place. Just like that. Now that's back in place, that's not going to fall off, that's not going anywhere, and the throttle works. Next thing we're going to do is reinstall this cover here. There's a kind of like a body clip on the bottom here, like this. Uh, that's going to line everything up for us because there's another hole right here that it lines up with and it'll kind of hold it in place for us, which is nice. Just like that. So that's cool, and then we can replace that little bitty seven millimeter bolt. And it's a seven millimeter bolt, so be careful with it. You could break it very easily. No, I don't have a torque spec, don't ask. It's, it's holding plastic to metal, so very, very light is good. And then we can replace this tube here. And now we can replace the intake boot. All right, so we gotta remember which way the intake boot goes on. It's this way. And we might have to manhandle it a little bit to get into it the correct position. Just like that. Just a little bit, there we go. And then we can tighten the hose clamps. They're little six millimeters. You wanna make sure that the intake boot is fully on the throttle, feel all the way around it on both ends of it. This one is. Just make sure it doesn't come off like that and you are all good to go. Now the next thing we need to do is replug in this EVAP tube, it's very easy. Uh, you just make sure the safety is set like this and just plug it in. Just like that, that's it. And finally, we can re-plug in the battery. When you're plugging in a battery, uh, make sure you touch the negative terminal first to see if you're gonna get any sparks. We didn't, that's good. And then we can put it back onto its home. Take our 10 millimeter wrench or socket. Make sure this is really well seated onto the terminal here. Then we're gonna tighten it. making sure you never touch the positive uh, side while you're touching the negative side with a wrench. Just make it tight enough so it doesn't come off while you're um, lifting up on it like that and it's perfect. So that's how to service your throttle body housing on an 05 Ford Focus with the Duratec 2.0 zero liter in line four. Uh, I thank you so very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video. It helps me an enormous amount and at 100,000 subscribers, I will be giving away a car. Not this one, but it will be a pretty decent car. So 
keep your eyes out for that. 100,000 subscribers. You get me there. I'm giving away a car. Um, I don't have anything else to say. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.